all right everyone welcome back to another video and in this one we are finally going to be getting our hands dirty downloading our first ethereum wallet we're going to be using metamask in this one but before we get to that let's go ahead and talk about what wallets are just a refresher in case anyone's not familiar so wallets are basically software that allow users to connect to the ethereum network and also they allow you to do a couple different things once you're connected create new Ethereum accounts, view your transaction history, of course, send Ether to other people, other accounts. So we're gonna be taking a look at all of that. Now, another thing I wanna mention real quick before we hop in is that there are different types of wallets. We're gonna be using a browser wallet, which is essentially just an extension that we can use from our browser. There are also desktop wallets that you can download and install right on your desktop. There are mobile wallets for your phone, of course, web wallets, if you go to coinbase.com, uh, it's kind of a wallet embedded in their platform. So lots of different types, but like I said, we are gonna be downloading and using one called MetaMask. So to do that, let's go ahead and get started. If you go to Chrome apps, or really if you type in uh, MetaMask download, it's probably gonna be the first thing that pops up. But this is also an easy way to get to it, where if you go to your Chrome apps, click on web store, and then the best bet is probably just to type in MetaMask, and there you go. So an Ethereum wallet in your browser, looking good. And all right, uh, fantastic, fantastic. Just go ahead and click add to Chrome right there. And it can do this, okay, looks good. All right, so if you don't see it stickied up in this top right area, what you can do is click on this little puzzle piece and next to MetaMask, if you click this pin, then what it does is it pins it to this little area right here. So there you go. Now let's see what we got. Pretty cool animation right here. Welcome to MetaMask, connecting you to Ethereum and the decentralized web. We're happy to see you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so no, we don't have one yet. This is our first time setting it up, so I'm gonna click yes. Let's set this up and create a wallet. Okay, so MetaMask is this, this, I agree. All right, so, so far pretty simple, asking you to set a password to protect your account. All right, uh, definitely read that. Just gonna go ahead and hit create. And all right, so uh, real quick, I wanna point out that this is actually a really cool uh, video to watch, but I'm gonna click next because I'm gonna explain to you in a bit exactly what this uh, secret recovery phrase is, which we're gonna talk about in the video. I'm gonna explain what it's all about. So let me go ahead and click next. And all right, so let's read this real quick. So your secret recovery phrase makes it easy to back up and restore your account, never disclose it to anyone. Okay, so what's going on here? I'm gonna click this to uncover 12 words. So what the heck are these? So check this out. You know a couple tutorials ago, it might've been like the second or third one, we were talking about accounts and the difference between a private key and a public key and an account number. And we pretty much said that you need a private key to really create a public key and an account number, you really need a private key to do anything on Ethereum. So we took a look at the private key and it looked like a big hexadecimal number. So what are these? These look like, you know, English words. So what does this have to do with our private key? So check it out. A private key is really nothing more than a big long number. Now, you'll often see it in hexadecimal form, but even hexadecimal form can be broken down to just a big, huge integer, basically. Now, of course, for humans, these huge integers are very, very difficult to remember, and even the shorter hexadecimal form. So instead, what this is, is something called a mnemonic. It's essentially a list of words, and each of these words is gonna be related to a given integer or number, and when you combine all of these words together, it essentially allows you to have a human, uh, a pretty much uh, way that humans can more easily remember very long numbers. So with that being said, I wanna say that this right here, and I'm gonna copy it and paste it right next to me actually, since I'm gonna need it in just a bit. So again, each of these words is actually mapped to a big number in the pretty much the background of this app. And when you combine all of those in a certain order, it's essentially gonna map out to your private key. So that said, you never wanna share this mnemonic or the secret recovery phrase with anyone. So go ahead and write it down, uh, hide it somewhere where no one's gonna find it. 
never send it through email or anything like that. And this is gonna be used if you ever, you know, your laptop ever crashes or your iMac, whatever you're using, uh, beefs out, then what you could do is you can always recover your account using this phrase. Okay, so let me just go ahead and click next. And what this screen is right here is it basically just makes sure that you wrote down your secret recovery phrase somewhere. So it asks you to pretty much just build it again. So mine was frequent, uh, what was it? Mean tackle height upon steak quote mushroom. All right, confirm and beautiful. Okay, so it says yada yada, bada boom, you're all good to go. I'm gonna click all done and all right. Don't really care about what's new for the time being. All right, looking good. Now, one quick thing that I wanna point out before you even get to poking around in here, and that is whenever you are, you know, just using your browser, going and uh, browsing different websites or uh, not on this UI and you wanna access your wallet, then what you can do is you can click this little icon right here and this is gonna pop up. Of course, if you ever wanna get back to that bigger UI, then what you can do is you can just click expand view. But essentially what I pretty much just wanna convey here is that this user interface is the exact same as this one. It's just, um, you know, I'm using the expanded view just because it's easier to teach with a little bit bigger area. So with that, let me go ahead and zoom in a bit and okay, let's start poking around. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is this right here, which is your account number. So if you wanna copy this and you know send it to your friends, your family and say, hey, send me some ether, then you can just go ahead and copy that, email it to them and that's what they're gonna use. And of course, moving on from there, another key thing to kind of point out right here is that this drop down right here, whenever you click it, you're going to see, okay, there's one item in here says Ethereum mainnet. So what this means is we're connected to the main Ethereum network. The Ethereum mainnet is like the network. It's the actual Ethereum network where your ether is actually worth uh, real money. Now there is this option right here that says show high test networks. So let's go ahead and click that. And okay, let me just toggle this on. And now let's scroll up and we can actually close out of this. So now that we toggled that on, let me click this drop down again. Huh, this is, this is interesting. So of course we are still connected to the Ethereum mainnet, but now we have these different options. So what are these? Robson, Coven, Rinkby, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, never do, and uh, localhost. So. In addition to the main Ethereum network, there are also other Ethereum networks for testing, development, and so on. And of course, on these networks, your Ether isn't worth anything. And we're actually gonna be connecting to these networks later on, whenever we develop these smart contracts and we wanna test them. And the reason for that is to be able to deploy and test your smart contracts, it does require Ether. Now, if we do it on the main network, because the transaction fees are pretty high right now, it's gonna be very expensive for development. So what we wanna do is we wanna use a test network and essentially just use that because, well, we can get ether for free more or less and it isn't worth anything. So it's uh, pretty much just a great testing environment. So that being said, let me go ahead and actually connect to the Rinkby test network right here. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is, I don't know if you saw my account number right here, so it starts with 3BA and it ends with 7-8-A-8. So I'm on Rink B right now. Let me go ahead and switch to Ethereum. Okay, same account number. Robson, same account number. All right, so this is pretty interesting. It looks like even though I'm switching networks, my account is staying the same. So what's going on here? So check this out. Whenever you have an Ethereum account, it's basically just a record on that network. Now the record can have different assets depending on which network it's on. So for example, let's say that this was the main Ethereum network right here. So for my account, I can just, well, even now, I have zero Ethereum on the main network. Now, whenever I connect to a different network, a development network, and I start getting ether for that, this network right here, it knows nothing about this network. In other words, the Rinkby test network has no idea what's going on in the Ethereum main network. It has no idea it exists. 
it really is completely isolated from a completely different environment. So again, I just want to point out that you can indeed use the same account across multiple different Ethereum networks. Let's say that this is the main one, this is a development one, and this is just another one used for testing. So it is fine to use the same account across multiple different networks. Just know that for each one, your account is essentially gonna have its own independent set of assets or ether. So with that being said, again, make sure that you're connected to the RinkB test network. And the first thing that we need to do before we can start developing smart contracts, writing Solidity, is we need to get some ether. Now, remember, this is an actual ether. In other words, we can just go to some exchange and buy some and send it to our account, but we actually want test ether. So the ether that we get for this network, it's not gonna be worth anything. We're not gonna be able to sell it anywhere, but we do need it because since we are gonna be using this development network, we just need ether to be able to send transactions, deploy smart contracts, so on and so forth. Okay, so we need ether, but where do we get it? So this is, <laughs> well, it's uh, probably one of the less standard things since uh, these seem to change quite often, but there are these services called faucets and they essentially allow you to do something simple like paste in your account address or make a tweet or something and then they send you some ether. Now, since these change so often, your best bet is likely just to go to Google and type in Rink B Faucet. So I just did that just to make sure I had a, a working one. And the first one I used actually didn't even work for this tutorial, so I went to this one. Now, again, these are pretty simple to use. Uh, what you can do in this case is just make sure you have your account number handy. So go back to your MetaMask wallet and just click copy to clipboard. Now in here, uh, what network do we want? Yes, we want RinkB. That looks good. Gonna paste in my account. And I'm also gonna uncheck this. We don't need any link. Uh, we just need some ether for testing. I'm not a robot. Well, pass that. Okay. And now send a request. So check it out. And okay, waiting for confirmation. May take about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or so. And now it says request complete. So let's go ahead and close this and pop back to MetaMask. And now, there you go. So you can see I now have 0 0.1 Ether in my account. Again, this is, you can call it fake Ether. It's RinkB Ether, but either way, good to go. Now, just a couple other items that I wanna point out on this UI. The first thing is this activity tab right here. So the activity is essentially gonna show you your transaction history. So again, the default view is this assets tab. So if you click on activity, you can see that we only have one transaction right now, and that is from the ether that we just received. And there are a few other elements to this UI. Most of them we're just gonna be covering as needed. Again, I don't wanna go over all of the individual details, uh, account settings right now. I don't think it's really uh, necessary or beneficial at this time. But I do wanna point out some simple things. Of course, uh, one of the most often is probably this send. Pretty simple UI, you click send and then you can paste in an account number. And then if you have multiple assets, you can select between, but you pretty much just uh, specify the amount and then, yeah, pretty simple UI, you click next and confirm. And then if it's all confirmed, it'll show up in your transaction history, yada, yada, tomato, tomato. And before I let you go, I do want to actually point out one other thing, and that's how to create an additional account. And we're going to be touching on this point in the future as well. But I know in the earlier tutorials, I mentioned that whenever you have a private key, you can derive the public key from it. And then from that, you can come up with the account number. Now, there are other wallet types called deterministic wallets. And what these allow you to do is essentially create multiple accounts from the same private key and hopefully we can get in a little bit later exactly how that works. But I just wanna point out now, because we are gonna be creating multiple accounts and we only ever had that one private key, which remember that was our secret recovery phrase, but just wanna point out in case that was uh, confusing for anyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an account and let me just say that uh, Bucky personal or whatever, it doesn't really matter the name. This isn't stored on the Ethereum network. It's uh, kind of just for local organization. So go ahead and hit create and there you go. So that is how you can have multiple accounts within the same network. And again, this is useful, you know, maybe you're developing something and you just wanna uh, send some ether between 
two different accounts or send some different type of assets. But there you go. That is the basics of MetaMask, how you get some sample ether. And on that note, I believe that we are now ready to start developing smart contracts. So I am uh, looking forward to it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all next video.